Hello there. Um, my name is Allie, and um, uh, welcome to my paint along this week. Uh, this is the Spooky Skull paint along. Um, so, a little bit about me in case you are new here. I, um, I'm a painting instructor. I teach uh, online painting classes, and I also teach live painting workshops here at my studio in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, and every Monday night, I come to you with a quick little demo um, where I teach you something new. Um, we've been working in a series. We're working on a fall series right now. So last week we did pumpkins, and today we're gonna do a skull. Um, so all these uh, demos are eight by 10, and they're just fast. This will be an hour long demo. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Melissa. Thank you for jumping in, guys. Um, feel free to say hello in the comments. Let everyone know where you are watching this demo from, where in the world you are, because we have people all over, which is awesome. Uh, hi, Deborah in Houston. Um, so yeah, so I always like to kind of tell you guys how it works. Um, so it's free to watch the demo as always and um, I also put together an outlines download for you um, it's a template that you can print on your home printer and then trace it using transfer paper so that you can put outlines on your panel and paint with me um, and just like I have I think having the outlines on first is really important um, so I don't freehand my outlines I transfer them and there's no shame in that guys <laughs> um, so that's why I have that um, template for you. So hi Susie in St. Louis, welcome to the demo. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get started. Hi Melissa. All right guys, let's do it. I'm excited for this one. I think this is going to be um, a lot of fun. All right, so I'm going to move uh, camera in here so you can see what I'm working on. I like to kind of show you some of my palette as well. I want to make sure you can see my reference image. That looks pretty good. And I'm just going to, I'm going to pull this demo up on my other screen also so that I can see your comments as we go through. Okay, we're all set. Looks good. All right, so I've got my outlines on here. I, after I transferred my outlines, I painted over them using a skinny little script liner brush like this. And I made a light purple um, from Elizabeth Crimson, Payne's Gray, and White. And that's what I use to go over my outlines. Um, and the reason that you paint over the outlines is basically just to cover up that pencil line, that graphite line, because we don't want that to show through. Um, and I should mention, I'm using Golden Fluid Acrylics for this demo. Um, that, that's what I always use. Golden is my paint company of choice. They're definitely the best. They have awesome pigment. Um, and I really like the fluid acrylics because you'll see as I'm working here, they just have like a really nice flow to them. Um, so that's what I like to use. Um, and if you get the download, you get a list of the paint colors that I'll be using, kind of my standard palette. I actually don't use that many colors. Um, can actually mix almost all the colors from just a handful of them so even though golden paints are more on the expensive side um, you don't need a lot of them and they last you a really long time hi Edith in Canada welcome all right so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start mapping out the shadows so I'm going to make a purple from a lizard and crimson and Payne's gray same recipe I use pretty much every time when I start doing my shadows. I like to combine those two colors. It just makes kind of a nice neutral purple. It's not a super intense purple. It's kind of a little bit dull. And I'm going to start looking for which side of the line is light, which side is dark. So up here at the top, we can tell that it is dark behind the line. The background is dark going up to the skull there. So I'm just going to start washing this in. I'm using flat tip brushes. These are by Royal Lang Nickel. These are not expensive brushes. Um, and I like synthetic hair, not natural hair brushes. Um, so that is what I'm using. 
All right, I'm actually gonna switch to a slightly larger brush. I was using my number three. I'm gonna switch to a number five. I'm gonna get it to move a little bit faster here. All right, going along here. So I'm just painting in. I'm not filling in the whole background with dark. I'm just kind of adding this halo effect, which is going to make the skull come out at me by putting it dark behind it. Now over on the right side, the edge gets a little bit blurred. We don't, because the skull is kind of drifting into the shadows. So we don't see exactly where it starts and stops quite so much. And that's okay. So I'm just going to kind of look for these shapes that I outlined and I'm going to find those so I can see it's kind of hugging that edge right here. Um, and coming in right there. Hi, Amy, down the street. Yes, one of my Chattanooga neighbors. You're gonna paint tomorrow, awesome. Sounds good. Look forward to seeing it. So if you guys um, are new here and you don't know, I have a group called Allie's Paint Friends and that is where everyone who does these demos with me, that is where they post their work afterwards. And it's really fun to see the different interpretations of the same demo. So if you're not in Allie's Paint Friends, check it out, it's a free group. It's really encouraging and fun to see what everybody's doing in there. I know it makes my day when I get to drop in there after doing one of these demos and see uh, all the fun pieces that came out of it. I love it. And I think it's also encouraging for those of you who purchased the download to actually go do it right away because you're seeing uh, the success of everybody else. I like it when you guys take action and start painting right away. Hi, Judith in Fort Collins. Hi, Vicki. All right, so we have a lot of shadows to map out here on our skull, so I'm just moving along with my dark mixture here. I mentioned in my email that went out this week how um, a lot of artists have painted skulls uh, as a practice for learning how to paint the face. Um, and actually, I did this when I was in college and taking art classes. We had to do some studies of skulls. I, I remember doing a lot of drawings of skeletons for one of my classes, and I think it was I think it was helpful to really learn that bone structure and know like why the shapes that I'm seeing in the actual figure are there because of the bones underneath. It's a good practice. One of my paint friends, Bonnie, sent me an email saying that Van Gogh uh, did a lot of skull paintings um, that you guys might be interested in looking up. They're pretty cool. So it doesn't have to just be like a Halloween or a morbid thing. It could just be a good practice for learning the face. All right, we're going to put this whole eye hole in here. And I've got my paint pretty watered down um, because we will come back and push these darks a little bit darker in the next step. But for right now, we just kind of want to get a nice thin wash and, and just find the areas that are appearing in shadow. So I've got a pretty soupy puddle on my palette here. You can see it's pretty wet. And then I'm just scraping my brush on the edge of my palette, coming back with just the tip of it and grabbing a little bit of that paint. And that allows me to keep my paint pretty thin without having it all pour down the canvas or the panel. I'm working on a wood panel. Um, that is what I like to work on. I'm not a fan of painting on canvas. So if I don't have to, I usually don't. Um, I like how the wood panel is smooth. It just uh, allows me to kind of show my brush strokes off a lot more. All right, this whole area is pretty dark. I'm just gonna put, wash all that in, I think. And then I might need to switch to a smaller brush to get in by the teeth there. I think I probably do. Um, 
looking at your comments here. Um, Amy says, good for shading too. Um, I guess I'm not quite sure what you're asking, Amy. Do you mean, is the brush good for shading? Let me know what your question is there. I don't do any blending, so um, I'm not exactly sure if that's what you mean by shading or if you just mean finding shadows. All right, I'm switching back down to my smaller brush to get in between the teeth here. All right, so it gets a little confusing with the teeth, so we wanna find the easy shapes first. So I know I've got these two front teeth and I know that it's dark in between them, so that's where I'm going to put my dark in first. I need to get a little bit more paint. Whenever you feel a little bit confused, uh, like you're not sure what shape is what, just start with what you know. Find something that's easy to identify, like these two front teeth that I found. I'm gonna find those first and put the shadow in around them. And now that helps me to identify where the other shadows are. So now I can tell this little shape here is a shadow. And we've got a shadow up here. So there was kind of a lot of lines. It's kind of busy by the teeth, but it starts to make sense once you just start to drop in a few of those shadows that are easy to find. Uh, Vicky's asking, are you using a flat brush? Yes, this is a flat brush. I always use flat brushes. I have no use. Well, the only time I don't is when I use a script liner brush for my outlines. That's it. Otherwise, I do all flats. Because I don't blend, um, I don't really have a purpose for anything other than a flat. This one's starting to split on me, though. I've really been giving this brush a workout. I need to probably toss it and get a new one. Don't try to fight with a brush that's splitting on you like I am. Just get a new one. <laughs> You'll save yourself a lot of time and frustration. And if you're not in the middle of teaching a demo, you can do that. I will have to just work with what I've got here. Uh, see, my brush was split and I lost that tooth, but that's okay, I'll find it later. All right, I'm gonna look for another brush. Hopefully I find one that's decent. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna go down to my number one that I've got here. That'll allow me to get in between these teeth. So we're just painting the dark spaces between the teeth. Teeth are tricky to paint when you are doing a portrait. Um, so one tip that I like to give people that are interested in attempting a portrait for the first time is um, don't paint the teeth if you don't have to. So try to find a portrait with a closed mouth if possible. Um, if you're new to portrait painting, it will just make your life a lot easier. Um, so in my, um, in my online class, Features and Faces, I do have a sample that um, shows teeth because I wanted to be able to go into a little more detail and really show you how to create the teeth. But I will admit that it is more of a challenge to keep the person from looking scary. Um, with this skull, we don't have to worry about it looking scary because that's what we're going for. So no problems there. But if you're doing a beautiful portrait of, you know, little baby girl or something, you probably don't want her to look scary. <laughs> All right, I think we got our shapes in and I actually kind of started already to go into, um, I started to go into some of the darker shadows. You see how I started to go a little darker on the teeth. So I should probably mention my next step is going to be to push the shadows a little bit darker. So I'm going to make my mixture a little darker by adding more paint to it with a little bit less water. So it's still going to be a Lizarin Crimson in Payne's Gray, but now it's going to have less water in it. And I'm going to look for the areas that look much darker, almost black here. So um, in the hollow of the nose, I'm not gonna fill in everything because we do kind of have some shapes going on in the nose, but I'm just looking for like what areas can I tell are really, really dark and I'm just gonna make my paint pretty thick in those places. 
if your darkest darks and your lightest lights are in the correct places, everything else will just kind of make sense. So that's what we want to be most concerned with, is making sure we put those darkest darks down correctly um, and nice and dark. All right, so we got it pretty dark in the hollow of the eye here. Now I feel like my brush is too small. You know, let me grab a different number three. Maybe this one won't split on me. That one I was using before that was splitting on me was working so well for a couple days. I used that one like all of last week and it was just great, but now it's starting to quit. All right, I'm getting those eyes my nice and dark. And I like using this kind of deep purple color for the dark. I never, never use black because I feel like it's boring and I like purple better. So I don't buy black paint. I just mix my blacks by mixing all my dark colors together. All right, so we know those eyes are really dark. Now let's go in by the mouth here. We can see some really dark shapes that we can drop in. Real dark here. And in between those teeth. I'm not gonna try to get all the dark shadows in between the teeth. I'm just looking for like the larger dark sections that I can fill in. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I am kind of watching off to the side here on my other screen. Um, if you've got anything you want to mention or ask about, or if you're painting the skull right now with me, let me know. I would love to uh, find out how it's going. I wanna know who's, who's painting with me right now. I know a lot of you um, watch the replay and paint with that because then you have the luxury of pausing it and kind of going at your own pace. I know I paint really fast, um, but the reason I paint fast is because I want to make sure I get you a, a full demo here in the one hour of time that we have. And I think that if I made this demo like three hours long, you guys would probably get bored. So <laughs> trying to keep it interesting um, and productive in my one hour of time here. Plus, I think it's good for you to actually push yourself to kind of paint a little faster than maybe what you normally would. I think you learn a lot by not overthinking everything and just getting in there and dropping in the shapes, dropping in those shadows and not getting too meticulous about all the details. Paintings are so much more about what you don't include than what you do. Um, just figuring out what the most essential components are and putting those in and that's really what matters the most. It's easy when you're looking at a photo, especially a really detailed photo, to get carried away and just try to put everything in. And that actually takes away the importance of the things you really want to show when you try to put everything into your painting. Okay, I think we've got, uh, maybe we'll push this area a little bit darker here. This shadow, I wanna go a little darker. And then I think we will call this, this step complete and we'll move on to our underpainting wash. So um, I like to do a complementary color underpainting. Complementary means opposite on the color wheel. So if in our reference image, if an area is going to be cool tones, like the skull is cool on the right side here, that means that I will put down a warm tone first. If it's going to be warm, like over on our left side, we've got some warm tones in the background. In those places, I'm going to put a cool tone down first. So I don't always do the exact true opposite, but I do kind of think about warm and cool and, um, kind of picking something that's going to be different from what's going to go down in the next layer. 
So one thing um, I want to mention that is important to be aware of is make sure that this underpainting is dry before you wash over it. Because if this paint is still wet, um, it's going to muddy up your colors that you're going to wash down. So I think mine's pretty much dry. Um, take a drink of water here and let it just dry for a few more seconds. That's what I like about acrylic paint is it dries really fast. So it's really nice. All right, so underpainting. Um, so the left side I mentioned is, is more warm tones. The right side is cooler tones. So I think on the left side, I'm going to start by putting blue down. And I'm going to use my favorite blue underpainting color, which is phthalo blue green shade. And I'm just gonna water it down a whole bunch. And I'm going to just wash right over what I put down. My paint's super, super thin. So it allows my shadows to show through. So I'm just gonna wash that in. On that side, maybe I'll bring it in to the skull a little bit, because I think that is kind of a more warm tones in the skull there. So we'll bring in this cool underpainting a little bit further in. And then I'm gonna switch and make it a warm underpainting. So what color do I want to put down for my warm tones? Let me think. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put some quinacridone magenta down, I think, because I really like quinacridone magenta. And it's one of my favorite colors from Golden. It's one you just can't mix. It's just a really fun color. I'm gonna put that down over here, but I'm not gonna fill this in everywhere. I'm actually gonna put some orange tones in as well. I like to kind of play with my underpainting, but I'm, I like to have a few little pops of this bright magenta. Okay, so I think for the rest of it, I'm going to do my burnt orange recipe, which I make from alizarin crimson and Hansa yellow opaque. I use this one a lot in underpainting. It's just a really nice warm tone to lay down first. Um, and I'm going to wash that over everything else. So everything that is still white or, or just got like that wash of shading before, everything that has not gotten a tone is going to get this burnt orange color. So we're kind of making a mess here, but it's gonna be fine. We will. Pull it all back out. All right, kind of just letting that flow into the blues there. I think maybe I want to push this a little darker. I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. And let's see. Maybe I want to push some of my blues a little darker. This is dry, so I can come back. I'm going to go back with a little bit more of my blue and just push those areas in the background a little bit darker. I want to build up my underpainting color just a little bit more. Usually what I think about is um, I think about how dark the final value is, and if it's going to be a darker area, I want to put my underpainting wash down a little darker. Uh, Vicky's asking what the mixture was for the burnt orange. Vicky, that was alizarin crimson and Hansa yellow opaque. Um, that makes that kind of nice burnt orange tone. All right, and let's actually pump up that quinacridone magenta too. I'm going to push that a little bit darker here. So the way I'm making it darker is just by adding more paint. I'm not changing the color. I'm just making it less transparent by having less water in my recipe and just building that up a little bit deeper. And let's make our burnt orange a little darker too. Now, maybe yours didn't go down as watered down as mine, so you might not even need to build yours up, but I just wanna push mine a little darker. It will make it easier for me to create shadows if I have a slightly darker base to begin with because I won't be fighting it quite so much. All right, I think that looks pretty good. 
Okay, now we want to actually go back and find those dark shadows again because when I did the wash, it kind of muddied those dark shadows. They don't stand out quite as much anymore. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to make an even darker black. Um, so before I made my black from Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray, but now I want an even darker black. So the way that I'm going to make it even darker is by using um, some phthalo green blue shade. So I'm going to use Alizarin Crimson and phthalo green blue shade and Payne's Gray. So this is going to be like a really deep dark black. And I'm actually not going to put any water in there. I'm just gonna use these paints opaque. This will be a nice inky color that I'm making here. And now I'm going to go back and look for those very darkest areas, okay? So we know inside the hollows of the eyes, it's very dark, but it's not the entire hollow. We're looking closely at the reference image and finding the places that look the very darkest and dropping in some nice fat brush strokes in those places. Um, same thing over here. Just pushing those very darkest places, not scrubbing these brush strokes in. I'm just laying them down and letting them be. Okay, so I know it was real dark in there. In the nose, I'm finding those really dark places. And by building up this nice dark base, this is going to allow us, once we start putting the um, color in like the whites and gray tones in the skull it will allow us to have something for it to sit on top of um, I generally like to put light tones on top of darker tones so having the nice dark base underneath is going to make those colors really pop when we layer them on top My underpainting is still a little bit wet and that doesn't really matter so much right now because I'm just layering the black on top of it. If I was trying to layer like my more opaque white tones on top and my underpainting was still wet, that would be a problem. But since we're just building up more dark shadow, it doesn't really matter if my underpainting is still a little bit wet. But usually when I have the time, I will make sure I wait for that underpainting to fully set up before I start layering on top of it. But we don't have the time right now, so I'm just going to work with what I've got here. I really think this one's going to be fun with all these underpainting tones poking through. One thing that I, I think is kind of fun about doing these weekly paint-alongs is that um, it forces me to paint things I wouldn't normally think to paint. You know, we're kind of working in a series here, and I think that that's so good to just kind of get outside of yourself sometimes. Like, I do a lot of flowers, but I like to change it up and just teach you guys something different every week. Um, and I think that that really helps helps you to learn and grow as an artist when you force yourself to just try painting something different um, and just change it up and, and challenge yourself. Um, I also think just the act of creating a small painting every week, just keeping that practice of finding one hour of time, it's just one hour, um, that is so good in growing your skills. Um, you know, I know it's hard to find time to paint, trust me, I totally get it, but I love seeing um, how so many of you really do carve out that time every week, just an hour of time to, to learn something and try something new. It's pretty awesome, and I can see how it helps. Okay, I think we've got those nice darks laid in and now I think we can start kind of laying in like what I would call like the frosting like the stages um, of you know more opaque color 
All right. Hi, Leonie. I think I'm saying your name right in Australia. Wow, thanks for joining us all the way from Australia. I, what time is it in Australia? It's 5.30 here, but I'm guessing it's very different there. <laughs> all right, so hopefully my underpainting is dry enough. I'm just gonna scoop up any little drips before I start layering paint on top. I think we're good. All right. So let's start to pull out some of the highlights on the skull. Um, so we don't want to go like super bright yet. You know, I know a skull is white, but we don't want to put straight white in yet because we want to have room to work towards our brightest highlights. And the brightest highlights in the skull are kind of up at the top here and I guess a few places right here. But we want to work our way towards that. So we're going to start with a slightly darker tone. Ah, uh, 7.30 Tuesday in Australia. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining me. Um, okay, so we're going to do white. And you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to put white right in with that color I was using for my black. So I had um, phthalo green, alizarin crimson, and Payne's gray in there. And I'm going to put white right in there. And that's going to give me kind of a nice gray. Um, and now I'm no longer going to thin my paint with water. I'm going to thin it with glazing medium. I'm using Liquitex matte medium. You can use any brand, um, but this is going to make my paint a little bit more transparent, which will allow my underpainting um, tones to show through, but it won't be watered down. It will keep the body of the paint. So from here on out, after we're done with the underpainting washes, um, I'm going to use this to thin my paint out. All right, so I'm gonna start layering this in over on the right side where I know it's gonna be darker, but I'm going to be really, really careful not to cover up all of my awesome, fun underpainting tones. So I'm gonna offload my brush a little bit, scrape it on my palette, and uh, get a little of the paint off of it so that I can leave some space for that underpainting tone to show through. I'll let this paint be kind of transparent. Oh, and Vicki is watching uh, Australia in the West is 5.30 in the morning. Wow, and you are up with me already. You are amazing. You must be a morning person like me. I am much better off at 5.30 in the morning than I am at like, I don't know, 8.30 at night. <laughs> like I can get a lot more done in the morning. I pretty much turn into a pumpkin at about eight o'clock at night. So again, this gray mixture that I have here is white with um, phthalo green, blue shade, Payne's gray, and alizarin crimson. I'm just starting to kind of pull out the white and gray tones in the skull. Just starting to build up some color and kind of cover up the underpainting, not totally cover it up, but just start to kind of find the value of the different shapes. Uh, 10.30 p.m. in the UK, Melissa, and you are watching with me. Well, hopefully you are a night person. Hopefully, either that or you're just really awesome. <laughs> I try to find a good time to do these demos and uh, because we have people all over the world, there really isn't a great time. So we just pick a time. <laughs> I've been doing these paint along demos for over a year now. Um, so if anybody is new watching, you, you just to let you know, you can go back and find all the old demos um, and you can still purchase the downloads from those old demos on my website, but I do wanna let everybody know that the 2021 downloads are only gonna be available to purchase until December 15th. Um, once before I said through the end of the year, but then I realized that that might get a little bit crazy like New Year's Eve with people getting them at the last minute. 
So I want to avoid that, and I'm going to say they are going to be available through the 15th. Um, but once you get them, you can always watch the, the videos. So the videos are going to stay out there, but the downloads with the outlines are only going to be through December 15th. We're going to do something a little new next year, so stay tuned with uh, what's happening in 2022. We're going to change it up a little bit, and I will have more news about that uh, coming soon. <laughs> um, it is 5.36 p.m. here um, in the Eastern time zone in the U.S., All right, moving along here with my gray tones. All right, I think I might need to lighten this a little bit so I can pull out a few highlights here because it's gonna get a little too confusing, I think. Maybe I'll drop some color into my teeth first. Not my teeth, my skull's teeth. We'll kind of shape these up a little bit more later, but I just want to get a little color in there so the teeth don't look orange. We have the luxury of not worrying about making these teeth look pretty because they don't have to. All right. Right here is going to get a lot darker, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm just gonna leave that as that dark reddish shape, but I'm going to um, add a little more white to this mixture that I've got going here to lighten up my gray tone a little bit further. So again, this mixture was phthalo green, blue shade, Payne's gray, alizarin crimson, and titanium white, and now I've just added more white to it. I still have some glazing medium in there. Okay, so we've got this a notch lighter, and yeah, it's showing up lighter. So I'm gonna put some nice big fat strokes in because I've got some room to work up here. I've got kind of an open area in the skull. I probably should have switched to a bigger brush, but I'm gonna just lay my brush down kind of hard and that will make it spread out and make a bigger brush stroke. Drop some of this highlight in. Probably should have warmed this gray up a little bit because I talked about how this is going to be warmer over here. We'll do that next, but first we're just going to drop a little gray color in here. So basically we're like kind of building steps towards those highlights. We're just working our way to getting lighter and lighter. We always err on the side of putting it down a little bit darker to begin with because that gives us room to work. That allows us to still be able to go lighter. If we go too light right away, then we have nowhere to go. Um highlights all right put a couple highlights on the teeth not filling in the teeth completely I'm just looking for where we've got some light kind of landing on them If you're doing this on your own too, it's also really helpful to kind of get back, um, step away from your painting every now and then, 
and kind of assess where you're at, you'll, you'll actually be amazed if you feel like it's a mess and you are frustrated with it. Sometimes if you just step away, you can kind of get fresh eyes and see it a little bit more clearly and it will help to kind of make it come together for you. So definitely recommend taking, taking some time to step away every now and then. All right, so we're still kind of in these mid-tones. We haven't gotten to the brightest highlights yet. Um, I'm gonna actually push it back towards the darks again. So I mentioned before how like this is kind of a dark blue over here and we haven't put some of these darker blue shadows in. So I'm gonna mix up that color now. So I think for that, we're gonna, we're gonna use some phthalo blue green shade. And I wanna make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm gonna use some white and then I'm going to dull it down by adding um, some alizarin crimson and a tiny bit of yellow. I'm gonna dull that down a little bit. So it was um, phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, yellow, Hansa yellow, and white. I'm gonna put some glazing medium in there. I need to get myself some more glazing medium. Okay, I think this will be a good color for some of those dark shadows. Okay, so we're gonna lay this on top of these areas that have kind of this rusty color over here. It's gonna look nice on top of that warm underpainting, putting some of these cool blue shadows in. Yeah, I like that. And I've got this thinned out with the glazing medium, like I mentioned. So I'm really not using very much paint um, because the medium really stretches it pretty far. I might need to switch to a smaller brush to get in by the teeth. And see right here on the right side, it really does kind of dissolve. So don't worry about like finding that edge perfectly because you're not going to be able to and it's really not necessary. Same thing up here, you know, it kind of just dissolves out into the distance. And that's, you know, kind of the spooky factor with it too. It's kind of just coming out of the background. It's, key. it's like integrating the background with the skull. And you know, that is actually an important tip for portrait painting too, is letting the subject that you're painting, letting that subject blend in with the background in some places is going to help you to make um, more successful portrait paintings. It's going to make that person that you're painting look like they're actually in the background setting that you are placing them in. Even if that's just like a solid color, letting some of those solid colors dance around on the person, it will just make them, it makes it feel like it makes more sense. Otherwise, um, sometimes a portrait can look like it's like a sticker on top of a background, especially if you're doing a solid color actually. But bringing some of those brush strokes into the image, um, it, it just looks good, trust me, try it. <laughs> It's like the colors in the background are always bouncing off of the subject. That's just kind of how light works. All right, so the, again, this dark blue that I'm using, I made this um, from phthalo blue, green shade, alizarin crimson, Hansa yellow, opaque, and titanium white, in case you missed that earlier. All right, I feel like we have maybe a good amount of shadows in there now. So now maybe we can start pushing our way back towards some of those brighter highlights that we were working towards before. So let's, let's warm up our highlights. Um, so let's make a new neutral color, new neutral, that is going to be uh, a little bit warmer. Um, Janet, you're having trouble hearing. 
Sorry about that. I don't know if that's happening for anybody else or not. You guys let me know if you're having audio issues. Not that I can really control it. <laughs> Laura says she can still hear. Okay, thanks, Laura. Um, okay, so we're gonna make those highlights and we will make those, um, how are we gonna do those? We're going to use titanium white. We're going to use some alizarin crimson, some um, hence the yellow opaque and a little bit, tiny, tiny bit of Payne's Gray to knock it down a little bit. Otherwise it would be really kind of peachy. So just the tiniest bit of Payne's Gray. So we're kind of making like a beige color. I'm putting more white in there. It's gonna be kind of like a warm beige that we're gonna start out with. And then I'm mixing in some glaze. My glaze was a little contaminated with some of that blue, but it's gonna be okay because I already have blue in my mixture, so. If I didn't have blue in my mixture, then it would be a problem if my glaze was contaminated. Let's see, yeah, that'll work for a highlight. Vicki says all good with the audio. Okay, super. All right, Janet, that might be one of your computer or your phone settings then. You might just need to turn the volume up. All right, so let's try this on top. Yeah, so doing these kind of warm highlights, still making sure that I leave that underpainting color, leave some of those cool tones, but we wanna start building up some warmer highlights. So I wanted to make sure that this new tone was like a notch or two brighter than the highlight that I had already put down. So it's a little bit brighter and we'll get brighter still. It's just a tiny amount brighter, actually. I probably should have gone a bit brighter, but we'll put some of this down and then we'll add some more white and brighten it up a little bit further. I'm gonna get in a little more specific here on my front teeth. I wanna try to shape those up a little bit. So sometimes I do get kind of detailed, like especially around some of the features. So I just wanna shape these teeth up because they were kind of losing their form, so. Sometimes it's okay to choke up on your brush. Just don't do it all the time. Oop. Probably should have grabbed a smaller brush. But the nice thing is about this skull, nobody knows what the teeth are supposed to look like. So nobody's going to know if you have an extra tooth in there <laughs> or if your teeth got a little wonky shaped. Don't need to worry about it. Nobody's going to check. One little bit of it over there. Okay, I think that's enough of that tone. Now I want to go even brighter. Cover it up. There we go. Okay, so for my next brightest tone, I'm going to add some more white. Need to get some more white here. We're gonna push it even brighter. And maybe I'll add a little more yellow in there. Make it a little more lemony looking, a little less beige looking. And we'll give that a try. Okay. Yeah, see that's more of a highlight. That's kind of what I was shooting for last time, but I didn't quite, didn't quite make it dramatic enough, but that's okay. We're just gonna work our way towards that. See how I'm not blending this into the previous color though? I'm just setting it down right on top and letting it do its thing and stand out. And I'm not filling in all of the areas of highlight. I'm just looking for what are the areas that are the brightest and pulling those highlights out. 
if I were to kind of scrub this color in, it would lose its impact because it would kind of get blended in with that previous color. So it wouldn't give us that drama of having contrast that we're looking for. I think um, a lot of times artists, maybe especially if you're new to acrylic painting, a lot of times people will be a little intimidated by having high contrast, but it's really what gives your painting depth is creating that contrast and, and pushing those lights lighter and the darks darker. Don't be afraid to do it because it will and like, it's kind of, it's, a, it's one of those things once you start, it's a little scary to go into it, but once you kind of work your way through the painting and you've built up that high contrast throughout and you step back, you can really see how that allows your painting to take shape and really have a lot of structure. And probably the most important tip that I can give you guys is it's only paint. <laughs> and this is just a skull, so <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't take your paintings too seriously, especially these silly paint-alongs. And a lot of the time, I think the best paintings come out of the times when you are just not overthinking it and you're just laying it down, trusting your instincts, I'm doing a lot of squinting to see like if I've found enough of these highlights. Maybe that's good for right now. Let's put some color in the background because I don't really want to have like these background colors showing up so much. So we said on the left side, we're going to do warm colors in the background. So let's pull out a bright orange. Um, let's go back to our burnt orange recipe, which was alizarin crimson and handsome yellow opaque. I got to get a little more handsome yellow. And I'm going to add some glazing medium in there. Yeah, and let's drop some of that into the background. Gotta hold my panel here so I don't knock it off. I get a little aggressive when I'm layering this stuff down. <laughs> In some places I have a little more yellow, In some places I have a little more of the alizarin and crimson. I kind of like to play around with that. And I, I'd like to um, let a little bit more of that blue show through kind of around the outside edges, kind of as like a sparkle. So kind of think about that as like a halo effect. But what you don't really want is to have it be like a perfect blue outline, like perfectly spaced around the edge because you want it to look free form. Like you just, you know, haphazardly laid these brush strokes down and it came out just perfect. So we can always um, cover up more, so maybe think about leaving more of the blue because you can always come back and cover up a little more of it. All right, and now on this side where we put the magenta down first, I want to put some cool tones down. Um, so we're going to, it's really pretty dark. We're gonna work kind of with this dark tone that we used before, but I wanna push it darker. So let's use Payne's Gray and some alizarin crimson and handsome yellow opaque i need more alizarin crimson Ooh, and we're almost six o'clock i'm gonna have to wrap this demo up like pretty close to six o'clock because it's my husband's birthday and we're going out for dinner so he will be waiting for me at a restaurant and so i can't make this demo go too long all right, um, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of white in because we don't want it to be totally black. So it's gonna be kind of this dark, misty purple tone. I'm gonna put some glazing medium in there and that'll be good. All right. Sorry, my hand's blocking it, but I have to hold the panel or it's gonna go flying.
Oh, okay. I will wish him a happy birthday, Vicky. His name is Jason, if anybody wants to say happy birthday to him. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we got some of that background tone filled in. Now, let's put some blue sparkles in over on the right side, and this is going to mirror some of that blue that we used as an underpainting over here. Um, so the blue we will make with um, phthalo blue, green shade, and white. And some glaze. I need to get myself some clean glaze because my glaze is all contaminated. All right, so phthalo blue and white. And we're going to drop some of these nice blue highlights over on the right side here. So I like to, when I'm choosing my underpainting colors, I, I like to use colors that I plan on using later. So we're kind of like sandwiching these colors in between the underpainting and the overpainting. So like this was a color that was in the underpainting, now it's showing up in the overpainting. I don't know if overpainting is a word. I don't know that I'm, <laughs> overpainting probably means working too much on something, but that's not what I'm using it as. I'm using it as like the final colors, you guys know. Again, phthalo blue and white we've got here with some glaze. Just kind of making these highlights over here glow. Dropping some into the teeth. Aw, uh, thank you, Janet. I don't want to do too much of this blue because I could get carried away. Um, and it's one of those things, it's like really cool, but if I put it everywhere, then it's not cool anymore. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop myself before I put too much of that blue down. Um, and let me think what else I want to just drop in real quick before we wrap this up. You know, I wanna do some kind of sparkly orange um, highlights over here on the left side. So I'm gonna clean my brush off really good, get all that blue off of it, because my blue will contaminate it. And then I'm going to use some pyrrole red light and Hansa yellow opaque and white and make a bright kind of peachy orange. we're gonna drop some of that in, which is gonna contrast these colors really nice. Mm, I think I need a little more white in there. Brighten that up a little bit. Okay, I'm offloading my brush, and then I'm gonna come back with just the tip of it a little bit. Sorry, you guys can't see that color. Move my palette over so you can see the color a little better. It's like a peach. There you go. Okay. And yeah, we're gonna drop some little peachy tones over here on the left side, because we've got a warm light coming in from the left side. background but I want my background to be a little darker so I'm going to add more red to it and more yellow so it's not quite so much white in there actually I think we need to dull this down to go in the background it's going to be too bright so let's put a little Payne's gray in there too and then we can yeah so this is more of like kind of a caramely brown tone. But just gives us that illusion of 
some warm light coming in from, from that side. That's probably enough. Okay, last thing I'm going to do is put some really bright white on here. So just a couple of places I'm going to put, you know, I think I'm just gonna go to straight white. I think, um, I think that'll be fine. So I'm gonna get myself some clean white and I'll just check and see if it's too much of a jump or if we can just do straight white. Let's see. Uh, it's kind of a big jump, but we're gonna do it anyways. I could maybe have toned it down with a little bit of yellow, but we're just gonna cut right to the chase here since the demo's pretty much over. So we're just gonna find the very brightest areas and drop this straight white in on those couple of places. Not gonna put it everywhere. Just a few places we're gonna drop some straight white in. to you all if you um, enjoyed this demo would you please share it hit the share button um, I would really appreciate that um, means a lot to me it allows more people to find me and my teachings um, and it just is really awesome so thank you for doing that um, yeah we're all done um, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the skeleton demo and um, be back next week with another uh, fall paint along. Um, and yeah, have a great night, you guys. Thanks for sharing. Don't forget to share it. Um, com put in the comments that you shared it. I appreciate that. Um, and then I can thank you. Um, okay, thanks so much, guys. Here's a close up. All right.